All right, guys, welcome to a new episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. I have a very interesting guest. Uh, she is a competition host and former coach, Miss Bella Martin. How are you doing? What's up, guys? I'm excited to be here. It's a good yeah. day. Uh, so I was doing some research on you, and the only podcast that I heard from you was the um, fit, uh, Fitness and Faith podcast or whatever. It was like one of your co one of your like you know friends that you got on their podcast. So have you have you done any other ones at all or? I have. I've done probably ten to twelve podcasts. Kind of. I've gone on the Move Fast Lift Heavy. I've done okay. on my friends. I've done the Kathy and Kilos. I've kind of jumped around. Anytime anybody wants to do a podcast, I love it because I think you can always have a better conversation. You can always bring light to new topics. So I think it's really fun to do. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan because I, I like to learn about like new things, especially for like guests that like people don't really know much about obviously like you know they see your instagram and social media and they like you know you're very out there and it's very colorful but i, I kind of want to talk about that later but um but typically when i the first question i ask is like when when did you start doing crossfit i started doing crossfit about three and a half years ago i was in grad school someone told me hey you should do it i was one of those people growing up i didn't think crossfit was for me because the idea that I had of it was what I got from my parents was it's not mm -hmm. safe. You'll get injured. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the old school idea of what people thought CrossFit was. So I always believed that it wasn't for me. And then finally, you know, I was just bored one day, signed up for a free week trial at one of the gyms back in college station and haven't turned back ever since. So it's kind of cool to see, you know, if you just change your mindset a little bit and you're a little bit more open to trying something new, what can happen? Because not only do I have, my favorite way and preferred way to do fitness. Now it's my job and how everything kind of happens for me has been through CrossFit. So I'm glad that I said yes, eventually. You gotta awesome. wait for your own timing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was funny. Cause like when I started, I was just doing the 300 workout and everyone was like, you're doing a CrossFit workout. And I was like, really? Like, yeah. And I was like, that that's a really a CrossFit workout. And so, and then um, when I was in the air force, uh, I was stationed in this, uh, in a, I was stationed in this place in like Miss in Massachusetts where I, I live in New Hampshire, so I would go down there and they had a CrossFit gym there. And so I was like, Hey, can I, can I try? And they're like, well, typically you need to do an on-ramp program. And I'm like, yeah, but I did the 300 workout. And they're like, yes, yeah, we'll, we'll just, just, just work out for Teddy, see, see where you're at. And then we'll like, let you know if you can, you have to do the on-ramp program. And after I started doing box jumps and they're like, yeah, you don't, you're good. Just, 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 you're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll teach you. So, and, um, yeah, it was like, that's how I got hooked. Like it was just. I used to be doing bro splits like all the time and it was just like started getting boring and then you know i tried something different and yeah i've been doing it for nine years so oh my goodness i'll yeah. get there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i i don't think i would ever change you know the way i do workouts anymore it's it'll just be straight work across your workouts i think once you find something that makes you feel good you look the way you want to look and you can kind of do just about anything with CrossFit. You can make any movement a CrossFit workout, yeah. which is really fun. So you're not doing the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. If it's a Thursday, yeah, in some cycles, you're like, oh, I know what I'm doing on Thursday. But it's never exactly the same unless you're repeating a workout, which is kind of one of my favorite parts about it. Because if you're bored doing CrossFit, that's on you. You've done something wrong. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, what what made you – actually, you became a coach for also as well. So like what, mm -hmm. what made you become a coach? So the gym that I was going to, I was going to classes, the owner said, Hey, you know, my wife's having a baby and I need someone to cover these classes. I can't find another person that can coach. All of our coaches are already spread too thin. What do you think? And I'm thinking to myself, well, I kind of just started CrossFit. I love it. And I drank the Kool-Aid immediately. So it wasn't like, a, oh, I don't know if this is for me. I was a swim coach. My mom's a group fitness instructor. Coaching is very comfortable for me, mm -hmm. but it was just a, I don't know if this is right for me. But then I talked with my mentor at the time and he was friends with Dave Castro. So he shot him a message and was like, hey, can we get this girl an L1 immediately? So I think it was maybe two weeks later, I went, took the L1 and I learned so much within that seminar because when your first year of CrossFit, you are just a sponge. You're learning movements, yeah. you're learning history, you're learning absolutely everything. So it was really fun to dive head first into CrossFit as a sport, but then also get really welcomed into it as well. It didn't, I didn't really have to fight to say, Hey, I want to be in CrossFit. I want to be part of this community. It was, we want you to be here. What do you think about that? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's pretty cool how it it just worked really fast. Yeah. And I, and I love the community in CrossFit because it's not like a typical global gym where like, you know, you kind of do your own thing and maybe like ask some random person for a spot. Like you'll have like people cheering you on getting all excited for workouts, especially like during the open too. So, yeah. So by the way, speaking of open, how, how was your open? So I would say I don't actually submit my scores for the open for a couple of reasons, but I would say I'm the fittest I've ever been, which is awesome. And with all the travel, it's something that I've had to really prioritize is consistency in the gym with Mm -hmm. fitness. Yeah. So to say that with everything that's happened in the last year that I'm still on track and I'm still fitter than I've ever been, is pretty awesome. I thought the workouts were really fun. And I would say the reason I don't submit my scores is because I like CrossFit for me. So I do all these things for me. And so by not submitting the scores, I don't have to deal with the, I don't have a good name for them, but the people that text you only during the open to find out how you did. And those kind of people, (laughs) they just bring negativity and you know who they are. Yeah, yeah. And it's those people that every year when the open comes around, oh, how'd you do? Because they want to know if they beat you or if you beat them. And if you did beat them, they, the excuses start to flow. Mm -hmm. And so this year I was thinking, you know, I don't have time for those characters this year. I'm not going to submit my scores. And it was the most fun I've ever had in an open. Yeah. So it's all good. And I think the workouts were great. I'm excited to see how quarterfinals shapes up, see what they do for semis. I mean, I think CrossFit's on track to continuing to become more professional. And I love that. Yeah. So are you planning to do like the quarterfinal workouts too as well? Oh yeah. Do- I'll okay. still do them for sure. Mayhem typically puts them in our programming and I follow Mayhem. And so if they're in there, we'll do them and It'll be kind of fun because then you can see the score is actually on the leaderboard for the people mm-hmm. who are continuing to progress through it. You can say, oh, cool. Like I would be there. And it feels good to just know where you're, you'd be at. And there's no consequences for that. Yeah. So did you PR your thrust thruster at all? I did 170. And it was nice. fun because Mayhem was actually on a thruster cycle. So we were actually trying to max out our thrusters. So I texted Jake and I was like, dude, you got me. You're ready to go. I'm so excited. Thank you. So that was fun. Yeah. And, and like, I, so I didn't sign up for the open either. So, um, cause I just didn't have the time and I didn't want to like, yeah. you know, I, I, I actually train at a, a at a non CrossFit affiliate, but they have like all CrossFit equipment. And so I didn't want to like drop in in a class, like pay, like, you know, all this amount of money just to, you know, just to yeah. do it. So I was just like, I'd rather use it just to remote, you know, this podcast or, or whatever else. So Absolutely. yeah. First time. No, I in, get it. Yeah. First time in nine years, I haven't done it. Oh my goodness. Well, so, at least you did the workouts though, right? I did. I did. I did one because okay. the the first okay. one, the, the first one, they, they don't have rings there. And so, okay. and like, and here's another problem. So I'm six, six and the bars, the pull-up bars there are like, I, I could literally like bend my elbows like this and like, I'm already mm-hmm. grabbing the bar. And so I'm like, this is, this is not, this is not going to work out. So You're like, there's no standard that I could ever pass with this no. one. No, no. But I, but I did the shuttle run and burpee uh, pull-up workout with a thruster. And I was just like, cause I, cause I knew I could actually do that workout. Cause it was pretty easy. Like in, in the setup was easy. So yeah. um, the problem was like, obviously the bar was so low. It was just like just jumping. And I was just like maybe two inches off the ground and I'm already, my chin, my chin's already over the bar. But, uh, but I, I did, I did PR my, my, uh, my thruster at 260. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's I was, awesome. and it's crazy. Like when you do the open, um, and like you do like a max lift, you never expect you're going to PR. And then like, you have like no. thousands of people that PR their lift and it's crazy because all that endurance. Well, all that, it's, all it's, it's so much fun. And I think that's why, you know, that's what gets people to do the open. It's how fit am I, or how strong can I be? Do I even know what my limits are? A mm-hmm. lot of people find that in the open. And that's always really fun to watch, especially the people that are not expecting it mm-hmm. to find success and actually re- do really well in these workouts. And then it's even kind of more fun to see on the leaderboard, these normal people that are doing the open workouts that are, you know, top 100 in the world. Yep. And it's like, I know that guy. Like, I know he's not top 100 fittest people in the world, but it's cool to be able to see, you know, that little bit of claim to fame is, oh yeah, for that one workout, I was, I was pretty good for a second there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, um, you, you said earlier that you do mayhem. So, uh, what, what made you do, what made you get involved with mayhem and do their programming compared to like other, other ones? So for me, I was following comp train for a little bit, but the amount of aerobic work that we were doing, I could not eat enough food in the day mm-hmm. to keep up with that. And naturally my family is very lean and small. 
and I have to put in a lot of time and effort to actually eat enough food to keep muscle on. <laughs> so for me, that was too much. And so coming off of that, the friends at my gym, they were doing mayhem. And so I figured, you know, might as well just kind of test it out, see what it's like. And I loved it because the workouts were so much fun. And Bergner Strength is a really fun strength program to be following. And you mm -hmm. see the results. So I think when it comes to picking and jumping on a program, if you know it works, you just have to trust the process. And that's a lot easier than saying, you know, well, there's this new program. I don't really know if it's going to work or not. Hopefully it does. Following Mayhem, you know it's going to work. So if you're doing the right things, unless there is some sort of outstanding circumstance, it, you're going to get fitter. Yeah. And I can say now that I've been following them for a while, I am definitely fitter than I was. So it was pretty easy for me too. And then also all the people at Mayhem, I've met a lot of them through working events and they're some of my favorite people ever. So supporting that is just, it's so easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I, I actually did do, um, I, I did the Bergner strength and CrossFit program for a year and then yeah. they, they shut it off because I guess he went over to Mayhem. And so, and then after that, I went, I went, I tried comp train for a year and I was like, uh, this, this is, this is okay. I, I'm, I'm not a big, I'm, you know, I try to, I try to, you know, go to the Northeast, you know, guy, cause I'm from the Northeast too. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I might as well try it out. But I, I've been doing misfit for the whole time. Okay. I, I love, love those guys. And they're, they're so nice and they're so helpful. And their program is just insane. It's, it's crazy. Okay. So okay. they have this thing, they have this thing called bitch work that, um, that it, it's like long endurance, like workouts and it's, oh, it's, it's so good. So I definitely, get, definitely get the aerobic capacity up. I love that. I think, I mean, that's the thing. There's so many programs, especially now I feel like there's a new program or training camp that pops up every year mm -hmm. that there's something for everybody. Yeah. If you don't like machines, you don't have to go do a program. That's mostly machines. If you don't like kind of the typical CrossFit, you probably won't go on jump ship. There's just, there's so many different ways to do it, yeah. which is why there's so many people that do CrossFit is because it is for everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, have you been to the mayhem like CrossFit gym or the mayhem not empire? Yet. Not yet. Not yet. I continue to try to get Cookville on my calendar for one of my like personal trips. That's a goal this year is to actually go on a trip for myself. Um, looking at my calendar this year, I don't actually know if I'm going to be able to have a weekend to myself, mm -hmm. which is fine, but it's definitely on there. There's, I mean, a lot of my friends live out there. So when I get out there, it'll be, you know, one of the best weeks ever, but yeah. How, how, far, time. <laughs> how, how far is Cookville from you? I, you live in Texas, right? I'm in Texas, so I'm in okay. Austin. It would probably be like a three hour flight, maybe. It mm -hmm. wouldn't be that bad. I could even drive there, It'd be probably 15 hours, which isn't that bad. So it's just a matter of finding the time. Yeah. In which you are slam packed with like all these comps and everything like that. <laughs> um, it's everything. There's yeah. always something. <laughs> yeah. So um, how did how did you start like getting into, you know, doing like being a host for competitions? Someone thought I would be good at it. And they said, hey, I think you'd be a good MC. And I didn't know that was a job, which is hilarious. I thought, mm -hmm. you know, someone, because when you go to local comps, a lot of times it's a coach that's on the mic or it's the gym owner that's on the mic. You don't actually think, oh, this is someone's job. Yeah. And so, you know, kind of not understanding that that was a job or even ever really an opportunity. I didn't know that was going to be for me, but classic me not thinking something should be for me. And then it becomes my full job. It's very on brand for me. Mm -hmm. So I started doing high rocks events in the States, which is interesting because now it's been two years since I've done a high rocks event, but high rocks is now kind of taking off and a little bit more popularity in the States, which yep. before it really wasn't, which, you know, they've got to find their step and find their people, at least in America, they do in Europe, they're already like super popular. Yeah. So I was doing high rocks and then I was thinking, wow, you know, I don't compete in high rocks. This isn't really what I do. CrossFit is what I do. How can I get involved in CrossFit events? And so I met a friend who worked media at CrossFit events and that was his thing. And so I told him, Hey, how do I get to this event? Wadapalooza? How do I work that event as an MC? He goes, I got you girl. I got your back. I volunteered at Waza as an MC. And then from then it, everything snowballed. So I volunteered and that year I, six months later, I went to Tori and Pro. So I think, you know, when you find what you're meant to do, people see that and then they, they're open to it and they're excited that you're there and you're really welcomed into it. Yeah. So being at Waza for your first like MC event, 
that's like one of the that's like one of the biggest events ever. Like I've I've always wanted to go there, yeah. and I, I I always say like every year I'm like, okay, I'm definitely going to Waterpalooza, but I never get the chance to. But like, what what was that for you? Like, were you were you like your eyeballs like just completely like wide open to being like seeing all these athletes, all these people, and like so it was crazy. I think I was so new to people. People didn't know who I was. So not only did people not know who he was, athletes didn't know who he was. So I could kind of just go be myself without really worrying, you know, oh, am I going to be received well? I mm -hmm. just went out there and I was myself. The guys that I got to work with that week, one of them, I actually, at this point, we travel the world together and I'm going to go to Spain with him four times this year to do events together. Wow. So it's really cool how we've become, you know, he's like a big brother to me. And I, you know, I went and stayed with him in Madrid with his wife. They're so kind. And so they brought me in and it was so fun to just be received really well. Mm -hmm. And what I think with Waza, it's a community event. So regardless of if you're in scale or you're elite, you're going to feel excited and you're going to feel welcome to be there. And that's exactly how I felt. And then the next year, which for me, it still feels crazy. So I went from one year I was the volunteer at Waza. And then this past Waza, I actually was only following the elite individuals and the elite teams. And when I found out that was my schedule, I went into Waza this year thinking, you know, if I get to do the intermediates, I would actually be really excited because my friends are competing intermediate. Mm -hmm. And how fun is it to be able to yeah. kind of like call on your friends? I think that's so fun. But when I found out that I was doing the elites this year, I actually had this moment of, do I really deserve to do this? Am I ready for this? Oh my goodness, like this is my reality now. And then the first time I got out on Flagler that first night, I almost cried because I was so overwhelmed with how far I've come in the last year mm -hmm. in my job, which yeah. is crazy to think that it's gone that well so quickly. Um, but yeah, I got out there for Waza. It's still, you know, it's like top three events for me and getting out there. And then now I see the athletes kind of, all over the place. So now the elites are also my friends. So I see them and I can kind of poke fun at them. And, you know, we have, <laughs> we have actual like friendships now. So when they're there, you know, they're running out there, they're fist bumping me when they're done, they're excited. They're giving me hugs. And it's such a fun experience because they're my friends now. And before you see these people, oh my goodness, they're yep. the elite athletes. They're the best of the best. And you look at them and they are just perfect specimens of humans. But then you become their friends and then you're even more excited. You're like, not only do you look phenomenal, you're performing really well. And that's really exciting to just be able to support you as a friend. And then we're kind of out there doing our jobs and it's, it's a whole thing. It's so much fun. It yeah. really is. I have, I think I have a dream job. It's great. <laughs> I, I, I think you do too. So, um, <laughs> do you, so, do you, so do you have like, like, I always at like asking people too. So is there a moment in like while you were emceeing that you said something and it was like totally off or like you kind of like put your like do a face palm after it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when it comes down, when it's my friends that are on the comp floor, they don't mind if I, you know, like hype them up or I poke fun at them. And mm -hmm. so one of my friends were in Dubai and everyone else was going singles on this one snatch workout. But he decided not to. My friend Daniel decided not to do singles. He was going touch and go. And so in my mind, I'm watching this. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. That's a different strategy than everybody else. So I start talking about it. The second I started talking about it, he stopped. And then he started doing singles. <laughs> and so and it's funny because you don't realize that the athletes are actually listening to you. So the athletes are listening to me as I'm talking, as they're working through this workout. People in the stands are listening to me. And so later they're like cracking, they're making fun of me. They're like, oh yeah. And he was going touch and go on a snatch. Oh, never mind. <laughs> and so it's, it's funny because it's not that information was incorrect. It's not that I, you know, completely butchered someone's name, but it's, I know them. And so when I'm talking about them and I'm hyping them up and then they just stop doing what they're doing. And I'm like, dang, I, I called attention to you. My bad, my bad brother. Sorry about it. Um, but it's, it's just kind of things like that. It's never anything that I'm embarrassed by. It's just being a human and talking about something, things are going to happen, especially in CrossFit. Anything yeah. can happen at any time. People's ropes explode. People, you know, things happen. And so just being able to watch, sometimes you say things and you're like, well, that was kind of ridiculous that I said that, but I'm talking about what's going on. 
so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So um, when you have like, let's just say if you have like someone in first place and like, then there's, then you find out like the second person uh, that's in less than second place is catching up like real quick. Do you kind of mm -hmm. like say something just to, you know, let the first place person know like, Hey, this guy's coming up on you. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I, for me, I like to call the action in a way that I like to hear it. So if I see someone and they're leading, but there's someone coming on their heels, I'm going to be talking about it. I know that the athletes are going to hear me and they'll even tell me too at Zelos games. Um, one of the athletes, Logan, he had no idea he was leading. He mm -hmm. had no idea he was leading his heat. And then he heard me say his name and where he was and where everyone else was. And he was like, no freaking way. I'm <laughs> winning right now. What the heck? And so it's fun because, you know, I'm just doing my job talking about what's going on, but these athletes are so zoned in on what they're trying to accomplish at that time mm -hmm. that they're probably not thinking about what else is going on. But if I can tell them, if, you know, there's not really an advantage I can give anybody by telling you where everybody else is, yeah. but heck, if you don't know, and I say it, you maybe if you have a little bit extra gas, you're going to try to go, or if you're in that front, you're going to try to just hold on to whatever you can. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. So, yeah. <laughs> um, ob obviously like, you know, your first comp and everything that you see all these like crazy, like fit individuals. Did you ever like fan, do you ever like fangirl on any of these people at all? Or like the no. first time? No. So for me, what I think is really funny is I put them in my mind as these people are doing their job mm -hmm. and their job just happens to be being very good at fitness. So when I meet them, they're just, I'm just meeting normal people to me. Which is really good because I think you don't want to treat them like celebrities. You don't want to go up to them and say, oh my goodness, can I have a selfie? Or get in their way or get in their face. And that's part of what they have to understand how to do. Like all of that media training is, okay, what do I do if I'm out and about and people start asking for selfies? You know, what is that like? Mm -hmm. But for me and my job, I just have to see them as normal people. And I think that's why I've been able to kind of become friends with a lot of them is I don't see them as these kind of big celebrities, I just see them as people and as my friends and kind of as my equals. So we can have good conversation without them being afraid of, oh, well, if I tell this person something, you know, it's not going to go beyond us. Yeah. So you can go talk to the Matt Frasers and have really funny conversation. And then that's that. And, yeah. you know, nobody ever feels weird about the interactions because you're just talking to them as a friend, yeah. which is something when I, I think when I talk to my friends and I'll be, you know, I'll be sharing a story about an athlete that we were hanging out and we were doing this and this is what we were doing. And you see them, they're just, like, you were there with them. And it blows people's minds because to them, they're celebrities. They only see them on the internet, mm -hmm. but they're just real people. Yeah. And they're just like us. And they're just, their job just happens to be, to be good at fitness, which that's also a dream job. If that's your job, good job. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> but I think that's something that I've always tried to do is don't fangirl and mm -hmm. don't be that person that makes other people uncomfortable yep. because that's how you lose friends. And that's how people are like, oh, well, that girl, she's exhausting because anytime someone famous comes in the room, she changes. Well, let's just treat them as normal people. And then at this point, it's even strange when people ask me for photos because then I'm thinking, okay, so this is how it's perceived. This is how if I went to someone and asked for yep. a photo, yeah. this is how it feels now. And it's weird. I'll tell you that it's weird, but it's, it's fun. Some people love it and that's just who they are. They're excited. But for me, I, I don't know. There's normal people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. So, um, yeah. I, so what, one, one of the, uh, things I realized that like they're normal people is I actually fanboyed on Carrie Pierce when I had her on my podcast. It was like the first mm. year I started doing this and like, I like literally she popped on the screen and I was like, Okay. Oh right, and I, I was just like, <laughs> I was like, all right, let's talk about type one lifting. And like, just like talking about the whole story and like, didn't say hello or anything like that. And I was like, so nervous. And then I realized that like, like these people are like normal people too. And yeah. they're, just, they're like very open to like talk to anybody. And it was like, and I think after Carrie Pierce, I, I think it was just like, okay, these people are just normal people you know, and yeah. it's, and it's that, and that's how it's like kind of gotten a little bit easier for me to do podcasts for, you know, complete strangers. You know, I just like kind of DM people on like Instagram saying, Hey, you, you interested? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, that's how you make friends anyway. Yeah. You yeah know? True. Like if you see someone on the internet and you like what they're posting, if they're not famous, you don't feel any sort of weirdness being like, Oh, I really like that you post that or making yeah. a comment on it. Yep. But the second someone is verified or the second someone 
has any sort of celebrity, you're scared to just be yourself. And you're scared to say, I liked that you posted that, or you posted that and it made me laugh or it made me think about this. But if you take that away, it's so much more fun. And you can see some one of these crazy athletes posting something and you respond, you're like, this is how it made me feel. Or I really like that you said that. And then they respond because you're not being weird. You're not, you know, you're not asking for feet pics on the mm -hmm. internet. You're just trying to be their friend, which is like a whole thing. And then you become friends with these people and then everything gets a little bit less scary and it becomes a little bit more fun when you get to watch your friends go live their dreams and yeah. do their job. Yeah. I, I, I don't get the feet pics thing. Lucky man. So then, well, well, my wife, my wife is, I, so, um, my wife has about 150,000 followers on Instagram and Amazing. yeah, so she's a, fa a fashion influencer. And so, cool. so, so many people DM her like, Hey, can you, can you show me your feet? Can I, all these, all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, how do you have the cojones to actually like say something like that? People are weird, man. I'll tell you that people are weird. And then that's why there's the message request folder on Instagram that you never go in you just leave it and never look into it. Yep. Yep. I agree. It's like so, so weird, but, um, the, the, the <laughs> back, back to being an MC. So yeah. uh, you've done this for you know a little while. So do you, do you want to do like more of like the back end of the work or you just kind of want to stay in like the, and being the face of like that a competitioner? So I really enjoy what I do. And so a question a lot of times is what is the next step for what you're doing? Can, you know, once you get to the top level of being an MC in CrossFit, and there's nothing else higher than the games, I would say, what happens there? Will you, do you feel like you've made it? Will you not? And I think the way that I've kind of shaped it in my mind is, well, all of these events are the same, regardless mm -hmm. of the level that they're on. Yeah. Because again, a lot of times it's the same athletes that you're seeing all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think if you see all of these events as the same, then you can kind of shape it into, well, what other sports can I get into? And so I think that is now where I'm at is, what does it look like to go do other things? And I recently connected with um, some of the people that work at NBC and they were at the event I was at in London. And this guy, Russell said, Hey, we're actually really big fans of you at NBC. And to me, that blows my mind because yeah. I'm thinking, I just do CrossFit events. How do you even know who I am? That's crazy. And that's not a, you know, that's not a reality that I've really thought of yet is what happens next because I'm trying so hard to build what I can in CrossFit. But that definitely has to be something, there's something later that comes. Yeah. And something I would also enjoy doing is helping people. Because there are so many people that reach out to me that do CrossFit, they're huge CrossFit frothers and they love everything about the sport and they wanna be an MC. And while not everybody can, because you know there's only so many events in the world, yeah. so many of these events need MCs and people just don't know where to get started. So being able to kind of be a resource for those people, I think it's really fun because we have these conversations and like, if I started today, this is what I would have wanted someone to tell me, which is not what I was told anyway. So now I have this knowledge and I can say, I don't know if I'd be any different now if someone had told me this, but this is what I wish I knew. Okay. So kind of that, like that mentor education role, but also there is no reason in my mind that I couldn't go explore other sports and like other media opportunities that way. Yeah, like the like the uh, 2023 Lumberjack, you know, championships or something like that. Sure. Or, yeah, why, why not? not? Arm wrestling, strongman. I don't care what it is. I'll do jousting. I think it'd be just as fun. Yeah, slap fights. I think there's, yeah, I think there are so many really fun, you know, sport communities that need someone that's just going to go give it their all and talk about it on the mic mm -hmm. and not judge them for doing fitness or doing sport or whatever it is. Because I think, when people see CrossFit, sometimes they're like, oh my gosh, people are doing that or people are still doing that, but it's a sport. It's a community. It's yep. an industry. It's the same thing. Yeah. So um, speaking about mentors, so did you, when you first started, were you like watching other people or like doing, watching videos or like talking to other people, like saying like, hey, like, what do I need to do better or whatnot? Yeah. So I think with me, when I started, I watched a lot of like past events because you can hear the audio and you can learn from that. Mm -hmm. But then also just becoming friends with the MCs that have been doing this for a really long time has been really beneficial to me in my career growth because I'm not someone, if you tell me that I'm doing something incorrectly or if you want me to change what I'm doing or add something, I'm not going to take that personally because it's my job. Yeah. So here, I would like you to do this because that can help you do your job better. 
I love that. And I, I live for that feedback, especially from people that have been doing it for a long time, because they're not going to tell me something that would hurt me because they care about me. And it's really honest and it's really healthy too. And I think a lot of times people, when they get feedback, if it's not entirely positive, they take it personally and then yep. they get really nervous about it. But when it comes to being an MC, it's not about me. I'm supposed to be creating an environment where thousands of people are enjoying it. And if I can do that better, why would I not want that feedback? Mm -hmm. So a lot of it really is just learning and growing from other MCs. And I would say the MCs that I get to travel the world with now are some of my closest friends. And if there's any event that I want to go to or anything that I have questions on, I can ask them anything. And I know that they would respond the second they saw it, even though most of my friends at this point live in like different time zones, which I'll tell you what, if we could get all the whole, the whole world on the same time zone, that'd make my life so much easier. <laughs> um, just going to say it would make my yeah. life so much easier, but it's just having those relationships. It's becoming friends with people and understanding that we're all working towards the same goal. So if someone tells you some feedback, you might not like it, but it's not personal. It's Hey, here. But then also something that I've thought about too recently is I can be really hard on myself. And I think a lot of people are hard on themselves because they mm -hmm. hold themselves to a higher standard. But when I go to an event and maybe I don't feel like I did it my best, but there's thousands of people there in another country that are excited that I'm there. It's because I'm being too hard on myself. If other people that barely know me are excited that I'm there and they're loving what I'm giving, that's, that's it. That's that. And you can be hard on yourself and you can reflect on it later, but I'm there for the people. So if they can love me, I can love myself too. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you know any ways to not be too hard on yourself, please let me know. Cause I do the same thing. I'm too. Trying. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, I'm my own worst coach. Like especially with podcasting or if something happens, it's just like, Oh, the world's ending. No, you can't, you know, it's no, it's yeah. no good. So. But I think people really enjoy the genuineness that I would say myself and my co MCs bring to the floor. They don't feel like we're putting on a performance. We're just having fun out there. If ABBA's playing, you know I'm dancing, regardless of the situation. Might not be entirely time appropriate, but it's ABBA and you gotta dance. Mm -hmm. And so then people kind of, they just feel more comfortable and they feel connected. And I think it's something special that we can bring to the sport is, hey, you get to meet the MC that's gonna be out there on the floor with your favorite athletes. You can have a relationship with me and it's a whole cool dynamic that in most sports you don't get to have. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. So um, yeah. how, how long does it take you to prep for each competition? Mm -hmm. I would say it kind of depends on the athletes going and what the event is. So if it's a CrossFit licensed event, I'll spend the time on looking up the athletes, their mm -hmm. histories, obviously names, pronunciations, what the workouts are, history of the event itself. And depending on where in the world that event is, I might know most of it already, or I can spend, you know, a couple of days and then the entire international flight making sure I know everything and kind of looking into it. And okay. so, and typically the MCs that I work with are doing the exact same thing. So when we meet, we can kind of exchange notes and everything's really easy. And I think when it comes to local events, I love to know everybody's names. So I try to get all those name pronunciations correct the first time. And then just looking at the workouts, making sure I know what's going on so that I can be more of a timekeeper. Because mm -hmm. I think when it comes to the local events, being able to stay on time is so crucial. Yeah, And that's yeah. where a lot of like the smaller events kind of falter. They're like, well, we're not really used to it. And if we got a schedule, we're going to stick to it unless it starts hailing outside and we can't do it. Mm -hmm. So I think it comes differently. But for most events, the bigger ones, I'll spend a couple of days in the front end. And then once I get there, it's every night looking at things like that. So Okay. Okay. So yeah. you talked about that one understanding workouts. So what yeah. are your what are your top two favorite workouts that you saw in a competition that you want to do? Oh God. I don't know if I want to do any of them. Because I think <laughs> for, for me, I don't do I don't do the whole competition fitness for time thing. Yeah, yeah. Um I would say when we were in Dubai, the Burj Khalifa climb was really cool. Mm -hmm. And what I liked about that workout is it is so different because these athletes most of them probably aren't ever training on a Versa climber. So they're not used to doing stairs and stairs and stairs. Add a weight vest onto it. That challenge was ridiculous. The 160 floors with a weight vest on and you're climbing. So I think that one 
if I ever had the opportunity to actually climb the Burj Khalifa, there's always rules and regulations and things. That'd mm -hmm. be crazy. Um, I also think the ski swim workout from the games this last year would be okay. something I would enjoy because I was a swimmer and I love the ski. So for me, and I was a distant swimmer too. So holding a pace, is pretty easy for me. So I could probably just get into a groove and it'd be fine. But I also, I don't do the whole competition thing. So when I see these athletes doing those workouts, I have no envy. I don't want to do any of it, <laughs> okay. any of it. I watch it and I'm like, that looks like it hurts. Yes. It definitely yeah. looks like it hurts. And then you talk to them later and they're like, oh my gosh, that was hell. That workout was so hard. Or, you know, it chafed my legs. It burned my arms, all of these things. I'm like, yeah, I don't don't envy you because mm -hmm. I just had to watch you do it. So yeah. yeah, I'm just here, just drinking my water, just waiting for you guys yeah, to I'm finish. Fine. Can yeah. you hurry up actually? <laughs> <You're also. laughs> yeah. uh, that's awesome. So, um, what are you, so like you said before, you've been all over the place. So what are your top, top two, like what top three favorite places that you like going to MC and like sightsee? Yeah. So this year I'll go to Spain four times, I think. And so I love Spain and a lot mm. of my friends live in Spain. And so being able to, at this point, go there, I'll have friends that I get to go see again and that are excited that I'm there. And then you get to know kind of their sport culture because CrossFit culture in America is one thing. CrossFit culture in Europe and in Spain is a very different thing. So mm. being able to go over there, I'm so crazy excited. I think I'm spending a month over there actually in the fall. Wow. So it'll be really fun to just go completely immerse myself in Spanish CrossFit culture. And then also Australia as well. I always tell people I identify as Australian, no claims to Australia other than <laughs> that I work with LSKD. But when I was there, I think it was the first time I've ever gone to a place and I felt, wow, this is, this is everything I've ever wanted. This is where I feel comfortable. All the people are amazing. So getting to go back there a couple of times this year, I'm, I'm also really excited. Again, you know, just being able to go back to the same places and have people there that are now excited that you're coming mm -hmm. because they have relationships with you. That is so fun. That in itself, I'll go anywhere in the world at this point because there's going to be someone there that is excited that I'm coming, which it feels so good. Yeah, that that energy in um, Oceana, like that Torium oh Pro. Gosh. Oh my gosh, it's insane! Yeah. With, like the flames throwing, like flying up all okay. over the place. Okay, so the flames was wild. So I would kept get like they would tell me when the flames were going to go off, and then I'd have to make sure I was not standing there because they were these massive flame cannons yeah. that were just coming off, and it was so fun because everyone is hyped, everyone is screaming, and every I mean CrossFit and wherever country you're in, people are excited. I think CrossFit fans in general are just excited people, oh, yeah, yeah. but I have never seen anything quite like Tori and pro fans. They were so fun and so loud. And that was, I mean, it was also winter time in Australia when Tori and pro happens. So it was raining, it was cold mm -hmm. and everyone was still there. It was packed the whole time. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you, do you think, to, to the, do you think Australia needs to have like more people come to the games? I think so. I think if you're looking at, you know, who's actually on the come up in Australia, you would agree with me. The thing is, most people do not follow CrossFit in the way that an MC does. So I see all of these people. I can tell you how far they've come in the last year. Mm -hmm. I can tell you why there's someone to look out for. But if you're just looking and you're thinking, oh, well, the Ellie Turners, the Tia's, the Cara's, yeah, you know, Tia and Cara are not competing this year. So then you'd think, oh, well, you know, those are the big two, but you'd be so surprised. The depth in Australia is actually something to be watching for. Yep. So I'm hopeful maybe this year, if you know, if everybody goes well and everything in the semis does pan out the way that I think it will, I think it'd be great to have some of these, especially young, they're young athletes over there, come to the games in Madison. But you know, it'll be the next couple of years as CrossFit continues to figure out what it's doing. These athletes will continue to show up and then then it won't even really be a conversation anymore. It's, oh, obviously we need to bring those athletes to the games because yeah. they deserve to be there. Yeah, definitely. So uh, what, do, yeah. what do you think some ways CrossFit can kind of like explore or like, you know, help out more like outside of the United States? So I think in terms of like the way the games are structured and the way to get to the games, I think there needs to be more opportunities to kind of prove that mm -hmm. because I think in other sports, there's not just one avenue to get to the games. I think if these athletes are competing at these CrossFit licensed events, that should hold some weight, but it really doesn't. The only thing it'll ever get you is if you win, you get some money or you could, you know, 
get qualification to another competition. Yeah. But it doesn't actually help get you to the games. So I think that's a conversation there is what is the purpose of CrossFit licensed events if not to help you get to the games? That's always a thought to me. My dog is in the back. I know. I, I, just, I just saw him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think there's that. But then I also think just taking CrossFit licensed events seriously. I mean, I travel around the world and these events are massive and they're huge and they're well attended and people are excited that they're happening and people from all over the place are coming there. But then in the States, I don't think we have as many CrossFit licensed events and the ones that we do have, I would say like Granite or Waza, everyone goes to those. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, why not more? You haven't, you didn't go to Waza. Why not? But if you lived in Spain, I know for a fact you'd go to the major championship yeah. because it's that fun. So I think it's, I mean, there's a lot of things, but I think sport culture and the fan culture around the world is different. And so understanding that and experiencing that, you can say, well, I wish they were doing this in America or I wish they were doing this in Europe. And I think what it comes down to is money in America. It's really easy to see exactly where it's going. Mm -hmm. It's not over in Europe yet. So now companies, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that they're figuring out, hey, let's go spend money in Europe in these European markets because these athletes are good. Yeah. These athletes are really good and they're not getting even close to the same sponsorship dollars. And I've had this conversation so many times on why aren't people giving these athletes money? Why aren't they getting the attention from brands? Just as brands don't think about it. They are oversaturated in the States and then yeah. everyone is left fighting for the one spot with these other brands. So I'm hopeful as that sport, you know, as our sport grows, more of these European athletes are going to be getting recognition and they're going to be getting those sponsorship dollars. So it can kind of even the playing field in terms of, you know, seriousness. And I think that's where it comes from, you know, mm -hmm. in the States, if you know that Brooke Wells is going to go compete at a competition, you'll probably want to go watch. But in Europe, there's 30 athletes that people are going to go come watch, which is, yeah. you know, it's just different. But I think, I think it's on the right track. I'm hopeful. And I can say that going to different countries around the world and experiencing these CrossFit events, it's growing, regardless of what anybody else wants to say. Mm -hmm. It's growing and it's going in the right direction. Good. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's what I like yeah. to hear. So do you yeah. ever do you ever think the CrossFit Games will go to another country? I would love it. Oh, my goodness. I would absolutely freaking love it if it went somewhere else. I think go, when you go to these other countries and you experience their events and then you kind of reflect on Madison, I think Madison is fun. And I think middle usa it's fine mm -hmm. but going somewhere else yeah. i think could be financially a better choice and i understand coming to the us you know it's so many more people are already in the states yeah but i think the event could be better if it was somewhere else why not have countries bid on where you can have the crossfit games a crossfit just, games in europe i tell you what it would take the cake it'd be so cool yeah just, uh, just like the olympics yeah just like yeah, the olympics I, just bid for it absolutely yeah. Bid for it. And I yeah. think and it, when it comes to attendance, people that want to go to games are going to go to games. Mm -hmm. And I, I will tell you what, I'm traveling everywhere and it costs me just as much to get to Madison as it gets to go to Europe. It's the same. It's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It's the same. Why would I not want to go to France to go watch the games or go work the games if it's going to cost me the same to get to Madison, Wisconsin? Yep, true. True, definitely. I think so, it'd be, I think it'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to see it in a different country. I definitely, yeah. yeah, it'd be awesome. I mean, Why I don't not? know, if, I don't know if I can go because I don't know if my wife and my kids would allow it. So, but you know, good to see it from a you know through the TV. It'd be cool. I'll tell yeah. you what, it'd be cool. Yeah. Um. So speaking about uh, like sponsorships earlier, and I actually you know, before mm -hmm. that, um, your you said your schedule is pretty crazy. So like, what does a typical schedule look like for you? Like, do you do you schedule like? A couple months out or like how does it like or six months out like how does that so work? i'm actually booked out through december at this point <laughs> oh, um so and i have a couple events already for 2024 that are tentatively on my calendar so i just pulled it up so i have like a little bit of a view so for me i'll go to australia and europe kind of like in the early part of the summer mm -hmm. and then i'll come back i'll go back over to europe for turf games and then I'll come, I have a couple events in America and then I'll actually all of September, almost I'll be in Spain and then I'll come back to America for an event and then I'll go to Australia and then I'll go back to Spain and then I'll go to Vegas and then I'll come back to America for a little bit and then I'll likely go to Dubai 
and then back to London. Um, so it's gross. I actually was at brunch the other day with a friend and I was explaining my calendar. She looks at me and she's like, I hate everything that you just said. And because it's <laughs> it's so it's so chaotic. Yeah. But it's organized to me. So, you know, I know the weekends that I have events. I know what days I'm gonna have to travel and booking things like that. So realistically, it's you get to an event, you go home on that Monday, and then you fly out on that Wednesday, and then you come back and it's the schedule like that, which I mean the fact that we have that many CrossFit events in the world that are big events, that's cool. So yeah. I'm fine. I'll keep doing it. I'm, I think it's crazy. It's so fun. Yeah. I mean, that, that's crazy. That like just bouncing yeah. all over the place. I mean, I can't imagine, yeah. I can't imagine what your passport looks like. Just like stamps, like everywhere. <gasps> they don't do stamps anymore. And I'll what? tell you what, I'm so frustrated. So most of the world does not do stamps anymore. So they have these like e-gates that you just walk up to. You scan your passport, looks at you, because it's all biometric data. Yeah, yeah. So it just looks at you, make sure it's you, and then you're done. The That's only so time weird. you ever get a st- yeah, I know. The only time you get a stamp now is if the for whatever reason your passport gets flagged. So sometimes they'll just flag your passport, so you have to go talk to someone saying, "Hey, this is why I'm in your country," um, or if you want to wait in line and not go through the e gates, which there's never a line at the e gates, so you might as well so you don't have to wait in line for customs but you don't get stamps anymore. It is so sad. I, I got one in Jamaica and that was like a couple of weeks ago. I don't get stamps anymore. Wow. That's, that's something, something, something I new know. today. My I passport's seen a lot of those e-gates. I'll tell you what, you can see where <laughs> you can see that. Yes. But there's not as many stamps, which it's okay. I think a lot of times I keep, cause for traveling international, a lot of times they'll ask you to have a printed boarding pass. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of those boarding passes. This whole little thing in the back here is, all either wristbands or media tags, things from events. So I get to kind of keep those there to remind me of my gold medal up there. Um, remind me of events. So very cool, very cool. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, obviously we talked earlier. Like you have tons of sponsors and stuff like that. Yes. So um, I know I, I looked at your like link tree and it was I think there was like twenty of them. I think I'm not quite sure, but uh, I don't know. Twenty, but they're all they're all good. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so like so how like. When you get a sponsor, what are you looking for to with the team or the sponsor to kind of make it beneficial for both of you guys? So for me, it has to be something that I already believe in. Mm-hmm. So it has to make some make sense to me. And that's something in graduate school, I focused on personal branding. That was all of my research. So that's that big idea of it has to be authentic for people to buy into it. So anything that I'm putting out there, it has to be real. So with LSKD, our sponsorship worked out because when I went over there for Torian, I met them, I went to their HQ, I met all their people and we loved each other. And this was before they made their push for the US. Mm-hmm. And so they brought me in and we're like, how can we work together? And at first it was, hey, we just talked to this person. What do you know about them? We just talked to this athlete. What can you tell us about them, about their brand? And since I meet everybody, we can have these really healthy conversations where I can say, you know, this person's a great athlete. I would say their personal brand doesn't necessarily align with yours or it does things like that where they have no idea because if they're going based on an Instagram, they have no idea what that person's like in real life. Mm -hmm. And so it was a lot more of a business thing. And then I started, you know, growing a little bit more in my brand. And then it just, it worked out that that sponsorship we have now it's like exclusive. All the clothing I wear has to be from them, but I was going to wear them anyway. And they were my preferred brand anyway, Mm -hmm. because of the relationship we established together. So that's one of those things. And especially if you're going to have an exclusive apparel relationship, that's big. That's huge. I mean, there are so many CrossFit brands that make clothing, but I have to wear LSKD, which I don't mind. It's my favorite. And so that made sense. And then I would say with Mayhem, I'm one of their community ambassadors. And that was the program that I was following anyway. And those are the people, the media team and some of the athletes are some of my favorite people that I think I've ever met in my entire life. There's mm-hmm. some of just the best people. So that made a lot of sense. Um, for shoes, once I started wearing Innovates, that's the only shoe I want to wear. And it made sense that that's the shoe that we get, I get to work with now. Um, I think I just started working with Trifecta, which actually has already changed my life. Because when it comes to traveling, yeah, I and I really like I don't have a ton of time to be making big meals, and I live by myself. 
So having someone that's going to take out that headache for me, that the food's already ready. All I do is pop it in the air fryer or put it on the stove, the microwave. That changed my life. And then also they can ship it to hotels. So if oh, I'm I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and that's what I talked to them about. I was like, hey, if I'm gone, what's the point of all this food at my house? And like, well, we can send it to your hotel. If you're going to be gone, why wouldn't we send it there? And to me, that was a company meeting me where I'm at. You know, that that's yeah, someone yeah. that's making it make sense for me. And so all of the brands that I work with, and actually just recently um, terminated my partnership with Beam because I don't really take Beam anymore. I think I'm tired enough at the end of the day that I do not need help <laughs> falling asleep. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and that's that's okay. And so when I told them, I was like, you know, hey, I, you know, this partnership doesn't serve me anymore. And they were totally understanding. They said, you know, we don't want you to feel like you have to talk about anything that's not a part of your daily life because that's mm-hmm. that doesn't help anybody. They said, whenever you do feel like this comes back, please let us know. You're always more than welcome to come back, that's which awesome. is great yeah. to be able to see, you know, to have these relationships with brands where it's, hey, this serves me, this serves you, we'll continue to work together and it'll be great. But if it doesn't, we can both at any time say, hey, this isn't really working for us, which that's what you want. You never want to feel that you have to promote something that you don't believe in. Yeah. Because that's when that's when people see it. And I think that's one of those things, if I'm thinking about it, an ad or partnership recently, that's why people were so upset with the Brookwell Snickers ad. I was just going to say know? that. Yeah. 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 That's why people were so upset because I've met Brooke a couple of times through events and I don't think I've ever seen her eat a Snickers before. I can't even tell you last time I ate a Snickers. I think the only person that I've ever hear say the words, I want Snickers is Matt Fraser. Yep. And that's like, and like everybody that, you know, that's a well-known story about Matt. And so if you're thinking about it, that didn't feel real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people came for her for it. Mm-hmm. And what a bummer that is that she's just trying to monetize her brand image and the internet is taking her down for it because they're like, well, that's not you. That's not real. And that's what all my research was about is people will respond well when they feel that it's authentic and real and they'll support you. Yep. But if they don't, they will come for you. Yep, definitely. And I fear the internet trolls. So I do not want them <laughs> to come for me. Um, and so I think that's, you know, I'm very grateful at, for the brands that I work with. And I think mm. something that is fun is I can kind of, come to them since it is my educational background i can read these contracts and i know it i know what it says so if there's something that i don't agree with or i have a question on i actually can understand and vocalize that and communicate with them whereas a lot of times athletes they have no idea what they're saying yeah no no clue especially no no, especially if they don't have representation and so a couple of my friends that are not i would say they're not like the top athletes but that are having brands reach out they've sent me their contracts and they say what do you think about this? And I can say, well, I'm not your lawyer, but here's what all of this means. Mm-hmm. You can choose what you want to do with it. And just having that understanding, it changes everything. Because mm-hmm. yeah. most people don't have that understanding, yep. nor do they need to. But when it's coming to that point with these athletes, like someone has to have their back. And if they don't have an agent, you got to You've got to understand what you're signing. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. yeah completely agree. Mm-hmm. Um, so your, your social media is, is your Instagram is like very, very well thought out. It looks like very yeah. professional pictures. Uh, unlike mine, it's just like, Hey, let's do a quick, <laughs> let's do a quick video. in this like dirt, like this, like old gym. that's like really dusty, even though I, I love this gym, love, love this gym. Yeah. But, uh, but, um, how, like what made you kind of like grow your brand through Instagram and like social media? Like how, how do you like, like, how did you start so, out? I actually love this because it really speaks to just really understanding social media as a tool. So mm. I had Instagram back when I was in high school, back when I was in early college, and it became a platform for me where I was so focused on how many likes I'm getting, because at the time it would tell you, it'd be like this person and this person and this person like this. And then once you got to 10, it would change that 10. Yeah. And so seeing that that became such a negative thing for me. And so I went off social media for about three years. And in 2020, I'm in grad school and I'm doing all of this research on how athletes can utilize social media to brand themselves, to get brand deals and to build a brand. Well, I applied everything that I had learned that I was going to help other athletes apply. I applied it on myself. 
So all these books and all these articles and all these research papers that I've written, I've applied to myself. And I can tell you that it works because I am my own case study, which is really fun mm -hmm. to say, I learned something in school and I used it in real life every single day. And something that I've also, you know, it's not necessarily the best practice, but I don't really lean on trends. So a lot TikTok is this platform that has come up and it literally pays you to be on trend. Mm -hmm. It pays you to go recreate someone else's content for your own good. Yeah. And I don't love that. I'm not a big fan of it either. I think, no. no, and I think it it defeats and waters down whatever your message is. So you'll see people on Instagram that are doing that. They're posting reels every single day and they're wondering why they're not growing. But it's because people are seeing their content and they're skipping through it because they've already seen it a hundred times, mm -hmm. but it also doesn't feel real. And so for me, what I've really focused on trying to build is if you go to my Instagram and you're looking through it and you're reading my captions, you're like, oh, okay, cool. I can see Bella saying this. I can probably imagine Bella doing this. And I feel like I know her through her Instagram. So when you meet me, you already feel like you're my friend Yep. and we already have this relationship. And so I've noticed that when I meet people that have either commented on my stuff online or they respond to, you know, messages or stories of mine on my Instagram, when we meet, they don't feel weird and they can talk to me and we already have an established relationship and friendship, which I think is so cool because if all I was doing was repurposing content, I don't think people would feel that I'm as approachable or that I'm a person. They'd be like, oh, she's just, you know, there she goes again, just recreating someone else's stuff. Yeah. So being real, and it goes back to the sponsorship things. I'm just trying to be myself. And if you follow me, it's probably because you perceive yourself as my friend and I want you to feel like you're my friend. And if you don't follow me, that's okay too. It's one of those things. I think people have held such a high value on following people. If this person follows this person, this is what it means, X, Y, Z, but not necessarily. Yeah. Sometimes you don't follow people or sometimes you do. And it means I just follow them. It doesn't mean much. But when it comes to monetizing, obviously those numbers matter. And it's really great to see that since 2020, I've accumulated 40,000 plus followers, which is great. But that just tells me that I'm doing the right thing. I'm just following what all of the research tells you to do. Yeah. You should write an so, ebook. Sell sell it as an ebook. I've thought about it. I think um, for me, what I would love to do is eventually just go back to my alma mater and start lecturing once you know I have some time to breathe. I think it'd be really nice to go back there and <laughs> you know because it's all the same staff. It's all yeah. the same people that taught me what I know. So going back there and you know just having the time to say, hey, let me teach you how to do this because nobody's going to teach you better than someone who did it and then saw that it worked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd read that. I'd read that evil. I'd, I'd read that in a heartbeat. Thank you. So, Thank you. Yeah. Um, you, can, you. you can email to email them any of that later. So, uh, I'll send you, I'll send you my first draft. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, one other question is like, you, you talk about like going all over the place. Have you ever thought about doing like a YouTube channel of just like, just going over? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I so would people just... have thought people have actually, they always say that. And for me, I don't think I would have a YouTube channel until I felt like I really had something to say. And I think every podcast I've ever been on, we've always gone over time because I always have something to say. Mm -hmm. I'm long winded, but it's my job to talk. So it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, if I ever had an opportunity where a videographer said, Hey, let's go do this together, I would want to do it right. So I don't think my skill set is taking videos. I don't think mm -hmm. my skill set is actually creating the content, which which is why I'm so grateful that I have the job that I have because I am surrounded by content creators. Yep, absolutely. Which is why I would say like my feed looks good and better than a normal person because I have professional photographers taking my photos, mm -hmm. spending hours editing them, making sure they look right. And they don't send me the raws because what am I supposed to do with that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to edit <laughs> things. I don't really know. Yeah. And so I think if I were to do it, I would have to do it right. I would have to have the same videographer following me around the world. All of the content would have to be uniform. I would, ha it would have to be this whole thing. So maybe that's a future of, okay, now I have the time. Now I have someone who's actually going to travel with me all over the place. But something for me that I've actually really enjoyed is that it's the opposite. I'm always with different creators. 
that you can kind of tell where in the world I am based on the creators that I'm with. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm in the States, I'm with some of the same creators. Then when I'm in Europe, I'm with some of the same. And then Dubai, it's like, who can get out to Dubai? We'll find out. So it's really fun to be able to even just kind of put all of that together into this kind of quilt of content where it's all these other creators just building, but I'm the kind of the vessel that we're all working towards with together. Yeah. So it's really fun. I, you know, it's a long winded way of saying maybe if I had someone following me around the world. So (laughs) hint, hint, anybody who's interested. Yeah. If anybody wants to follow me, let me know. (laughs) (laughs) All right, cool. So uh, we're getting close to the end. So I have some rapid fire questions. They're not rapid fire. You can take as long as you want on them. So, um, so do you have any goals for like the rest of the year? It could be like personal fitness, like whatever. Um, okay. So fitness goals, I would like to clean 215. About like 205, 210 right now. So I think that's great. Um, I would say I want to take one personal trip for myself. That is my personal goal is to just take one personal trip for myself. Mm -hmm. And I would say probably to just get better street clothes as like a human goal. Cause I'm wearing, people roast me all the time. They're like, Bella, you are literally in fitness apparel all the time, which Same. I am, I get it. But if some, I, I think I, if, I think this is me putting into the universe that I need to hire a personal shopper to buy me real people clothes. So. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, 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 I'll link you to my wife's like Amazon fashion page. There we go. Um, That's would, what I need. You would love like, her, like our closet is, I only have like one rack. Cause like oh her, it's like an L shaped like walk-in closet and it's like all her stuff and she's very I fashionable. And like, she's like, how long have you had this t-shirt for? And I'm like, I, a very long time. I don't care. I, I work know. out in it. And she's like, yes, you need to get something new. And like, she'll like get me like new clothes and stuff like that. And then like, it's I like, I'll, 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 I'll wear, I'll, I'll wear like a shirt. And she's like, that's more of like a summertime shirt. And I'm like, yes, I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I just want to wear it. You're like, like, does it fit? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it fits. I, hear it. I, I like it. It's comfortable. And she's like, no, no, you gotta, you gotta wear something different. I'm like, okay. Oh my God. So, Can yeah. I borrow her? I feel like that. I just need to borrow her for a little bit. You can have her back, but yeah. I need her for a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, I'll ask her. So, <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> um, so next question. So what are some things that, uh, that you like doing that? Like nobody outside of like, you know, the CrossFit space has any idea that you did like doing. Hmm. interesting that's a good one um let's see i really enjoy doing group exercise classes which has become it's really funny because i think when you think of group exercise classes you think of the girlies that are in the Mm two-piece sets and things like that i eat that up it is so much fun so that has been something that i'm starting to add into my weeks when i'm around because I actually do truly enjoy it. And it's fun for me because it's also such a different community and atmosphere that I'm used to yeah. that I kind of get to just, I just get to be me and mm-hmm. nobody knows who I am. Yeah. Nobody knows what I am. Nobody knows who I am. So it's really fun to have that. I would also say I, I'm a big nerd. So for me, a long time, most of graduate school and afterwards, I would just read research articles and then I would write my own research papers. So, and that's something that I have still tried to find time to do is writing research papers, which is so dumb because what am I going to do with them? Not going to publish them. But I think it's really satisfying to go through researching. You have an entire bibliography of con- of just citations and then yeah. going to put them all together. At some point, someone in CrossFit needs to have something to say. So maybe one day I'll publish them, but yeah. Ebook, sell them yeah. an ebook, your own personal there we website. Go. Yes. Yes. You got it. <laughs> That's all you need to do. Just make some quick yeah. cash. So you can go to like, you know, your, your own personal trip to some like exactly. Bora Bora or something like that. To Cookville. Yeah. My personal yeah. trip Oh yeah. To Cookville. Cookville. So yes, yes. That's all I need. <laughs> yeah. <it's> all... <laughs> um, next, next question. So what is in your gym bag? Oh my goodness. Um, it's somewhere over here. Okay. So I have, Protein bars. I have bear bells. I can actually like see inside it right now. I have my airwave, which they just recently sent to me. So I'm on week one of testing it out to see if I like it. I have a bunch of cough drops and throat things because mm-hmm. I travel with my gym bag. It's like yeah. my travel bag. So I have all of the things that keep your throat protected, which is always fun because you never know when someone's going to need it. I have chapstick, gummy bears, a jump rope, a t-shirt, two whiteboards, 
a calendar and a lot of expo markers. And it looks to be three different travel adapters. Okay. Okay. So, so white... gym things and travel things. <laughs> Interesting. I've never heard anybody say a calendar or a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Okay. All so, right. So I have, I have a couple calendars. I have about two or three of these small ones that I, this one's always at home. So I always know what's going on. And then I have one that I travel with. So if I need to take notes or if I get a message when I'm away, I have mm -hmm. that, I can just write it down. Or if I want to take notes on literally everything, there's always little lines in the back and then whiteboards. I am one of those people that I have, I have SugarWad on my phone. I actually mm -hmm. have SugarWad and the Mayhem app, which I have the exact same content on both. And I am the person that writes down everything that's on the program. And then I like write little notes. I'm like, okay, this is where you're supposed to be. This is what Sage said. This is what Jake said. It's everything. And it's yeah. beautiful. It's a work of art. And I do it every single day. Um, I probably waste a lot of time doing that. But what else <laughs> am I supposed to do? I don't know. Hey, whatever. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I even wrote like the open workouts down as if I was going to have time to look at my whiteboard during mm -hmm. any of these workouts. But I still do it. It's just kind of a, it's just a habit. When I walk into the gym, I start stretching your hips and write everything in the world down on the whiteboard. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, this one is going to be a little deep. So, uh, okay, let's so, so, okay. so get ready. So okay. let's just, let's just say it's your last day on earth and all your friends are around you. How do you want people okay. to know you as? I want to know me as Bella. So I think with the brand that I've created, I'm Miss Bella Martin. So everywhere in the world, when I go somewhere, it's Miss Bella Martin. Even people will come up to me and say, Oh, I'm Miss Bella Martin. You're here. And mm -hmm. it's funny. And he, even Brent Fakowski called me that once. And I was like, let's, let's just call me Bella, please. <laughs> and so it's like, dude, come on. But I think the brand that I have online, as much it is as me, you don't get to see me on just the regular day. Mm -hmm. And as much as of myself as I can share in the world, there are still parts of me that are meant to just be for my friends and family. And then eventually someday, my videographer or someone who travels the world with me, you know, I, I want to just be known as me. And that person loves people. I love giving presents. Anybody who knows me, I will show up to any function with a present. It could mm -hmm. be brunch and I'm showing up with a present. I love people and I want people to feel loved with my presence. And even when I'm not around, I want you to know that I still care for you. And I still love you. Even if you don't see me for a month and a half, because I'm halfway across the world. So I definitely want people to know me and remember me as Bella, not Miss Bella Martin. Okay. All right. That's good. I like that. I like that. Uh, last question. So uh, where can people reach out to you if they have any questions about like being an MC or, you know, being a dog mom or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, actually just Miss Bella Martin, pretty much anywhere you look, I am there as that. So LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, my email, it's all Miss Bella Martin. I was very lucky to be able to have that domain for everything. So yeah. if you ever need me, type Miss Bell Martin in whatever search platform you're on, and you'll find me. <laughs> that same with me with Type One Lifting. Like no one else yeah. had it. I'm like, thank God. I was like, thank God. I had no idea because I was I was thinking I'm like someone probably is gonna have this, and luckily no one did it. And I'm like, oh yeah, because originally you don't want to be the guy with different domain names. Like no, we want no, that. no, no. And it's funny because like originally, <laughs> like the t-shirt company I was looking to do is called Asta Grass, and I'm like, everyone mm. has, everyone has that. Like, and I'm like, forget, it. I'll just yeah. do type one lifting. So, okay. yeah. Well, well, thank you very much it. for doing this. I, I, I appreciate right. it. So, this was fun. Uh, yeah, and I would love to have you back on. You know, maybe you know, a couple like halfway to the end of the year or something like that. Kind of see sure. where you're at and stuff like that. And if you got a tan or something like that from going to you know Australia or whatnot, catch me at the end of September. I probably will only speak Spanish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thank you very much, and we'll talk later. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much.